This is the first of several videos about the quantum currency matrix. And what I want to try and do here is to introduce some of the basic concepts, the ideas behind the development of the matrix, why it is we need such a tool, how to use it and how to apply it in the world of Forex trading. Now perhaps to start with some basic ideas about the Forex market, the market itself works on currency flows. It is driven by sentiment and the Forex market itself sits at the heart of the financial world and really reflects the continuous flow from risk on to risk off through the various currencies and these are reflected in price movements in the various currency pairs. Now the problem of course is that this is a complex relationship. If we just consider the eight primary currencies, the dollar, the yen, the euro, the pound, the Aussie dollar, the Canadian dollar, the New Zealand dollar and the Swiss franc, once you combine those into pairs, we have 28 pairs to consider. And this is notwithstanding all the other currencies that are currently available. And the combinations literally run into hundreds, if not thousands. So when we're looking at currency flow, the starting point is always the currency strength indicator. And as I'm sure you know, we developed the quantum currency strength indicator to do just that. In other words, it disassembles the forex market into the individual currencies themselves. And on the currency strength indicator, we can then see whether an individual currency is either rising or falling, or if indeed it's in a congestion phase. So that's the starting point. It's a disassembling of the market into its basic components, if you like. In other words, the basic currencies themselves. We then start to rebuild those currencies into pairs for further consideration. And this really is where the currency matrix steps in. It's step two, if you like. Step one begins with the currency strength indicator and step two is the currency matrix. And when you think about it, and here we're going to look at the euro, for example. This is where the complexities of currency flows become self-evident. If we take the euro as an example, the euro has seven possible combinations of pairs through which it could be bought or sold. It could be bought or sold through the Euro Dollar, Euro Aussie, Euro New Zealand, Euro Yen, Euro Swiss, Euro CAD and Euro Pound. And trying to interpret where those flows are either strong or weak. And perhaps more importantly, whether that flow is universal, unanimous in other words, is the Euro being bought or sold across the market or is the flow of the euro less strong in one currency pair and perhaps stronger in another and indeed in some currency pairs it may even be in the opposite direction in other words being bought in one and sold in another and this is one aspect of the currency matrix it's been developed to try and highlight this flow of currency quickly and easily to help us make trading decisions, to help us understand whether flow is unanimous or not, to help us understand that in the currency pair we're considering, whether it's the best pair to consider, is there a better pair to look at? In addition, it's also been designed 
to show us when currency flows are rotating, perhaps out of a major, such as the euro dollar, where buying or selling of the euro against the dollar may be waning, but perhaps the market is moving more heavily into a cross-currency pair. And this again is something that's reflected in the currency matrix. I hope that gives a flavour of why it is that this market is complex, why it is that it's driven on currency flows, sitting as it does at the heart of the financial markets. You can think of it as the gateway, if you like. It's the, it's the mechanism by which money is moved from one asset class to another. And whilst looking at the currency strength indicator, we see individual currency strength or weakness. What the currency matrix is aiming to do is to build on that knowledge and give us the complete picture in terms of risk and sentiment through the related pairs. And also when the currency flows are rotating out of perhaps one currency into another and the unanimous nature of buying and selling across the market. So I hope that's provided a brief introduction to the currency matrix, some background if you like. In the next series of videos, we're going to look at the matrix in detail, some applications, how to use it in live trading, and what it's telling you and revealing about the flows in the market. So thanks for watching and see you again soon.